What are human rights? Uh, much of the material for this lecture comes from uh, Andrew Clapham's Human Rights, a very short introduction, your uh, key reading for this particular learning unit. Uh, I also highly recommend that you download and print off a copy of the lecture uh, as a Word document. This will allow you to follow more closely uh, what's being said and to, to key, uh, key items. Uh, this week we embark on a closer examination of the human rights movement, working toward a clearer definition and shared understanding of what the term means. Several short readings, including a brief synopsis of civil religion by Robert Bella, the actual text of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and the small reader by Andrew Clapham, provide an introductory overview to human rights. I've also added a couple of videos, including one on the Nuremberg trial and a lively 12-minute recording of Eleanor Roosevelt reading the 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights. You're also invited to take a tour of the basic United Nations treaties, covenants, and conventions. Tour is here an overstated term, perhaps graze a bit in the vast pasture of resources provides a more realistic set of expectations for the week. Taken together, the readings and videos will add depth to our discussion of human rights as a form of civil or implicit religion, as a universal set of legal ethical guidelines, and as such, the problems inherent in gaining global consensus and enforcement. A key objective aims at bringing into view the transformation of thinking that occurred in the wake of the French Revolution up through World War I, and then following World War II, the profound loss of trust or faith that a universal historical consciousness would indeed move forward by natural and supernatural processes, and that in due course, everything will come to a final and blissful resting point or end without self-conscious human intervention in the form of law and restitution. The short reader by Andrew Clapham sketches the idea of tension between competing interests and worldviews among human rights advocates and between them and other ideal and material interests, which are not always nefarious. It provides entry points and vocabularies, ways of focusing our thinking and political legal action in an ever-expanding array of potential human rights topics. Clap Clapham notes in the opening material that human rights culture means different things to different people, with an accompanying risk that everything can be defined as human rights issues, meaning nothing is in reality. The Human Rights Project is not simply about implementing a set of obligations, says Clapham, quote, fixed in history. Rather, the human rights movement is about people standing up to injustice and showing solidarity in the face of oppression, end quote. On the one hand, this broad ideal fails to pinpoint with precision what injustice means. On the other, even this broad scope definition omits the plausibility of human rights violations on the part of terrorist or other criminal organizations. And here I think is the crux. For Jeremy Bentham, now again quoting from Clapham, real rights are legal rights, and it is the role of lawmakers and not natural rights advocates to generate rights and determine their limits, end quotes. This natural conservative tendency in Bentham, like Martin Luther King, much later, who pauses on the bridge to Selma to get a court order, noting that advocates are asking for trouble, inviting anarchy, even to suggest the government is constrained by natural rights. Martin Luther King, after all, was marching for the Voting Rights Act. Contemporary human rights have their origins, according to Clapham, in the natural, constitutional, and political rights discourse that emerged in the Enlightenment and found their way into the constitutions 
of the 18th and 19th centuries. This idea will be thematic for us going forward. And in Chapter 1, Clapham thumbnails the historical development of human rights documents and writings. Note that these are all from Western uh, civilizations. The Magna Carta, the English Bill of Rights, uh, down through Thomas Paine, and finally Mary Wollstonecraft and the Vindication of the Rights of Women. Some key takeaway points in Chapter 1 of Clapham are, one, that for some human rights are obvious, self-evident, and logical. Two, human rights claims occur when people feel done in by things, a sense of rights have been violated. Three, a shared sense of grievance nourishes the idea of standing together. Four, appealing to rights as a way of changing the system. Five, historical associations between human rights and Western preoccupations have often resulted in dismissals. However, claims have often been invoked in context of anti-colonialism, anti-imperialism, anti-slavery, anti-apartheid, anti-racism, feminism, and indigenous movements. The solidarity of victims, much to the uh, consternation of a Marxist, can transcend race, class, and gender, and even social class. So again, not everyone agrees that rights talks is, a, is an appropriate way to organize society or to satisfy the need for a fair distribution of wealth, opportunities, and or human development. And as Clapman notices, Clapman notices at the end of this chapter, the discussion can no can so quickly move toward a general theme of rights rather than the specific category of human rights. Chapter 2 uh, in Clapham develops this theme through a brief synopsis of the history of the foundational documents in international law. We will return to these in later weeks, thus for weeks 2 and 3. We are simply going to graze in the United Nations website uh, with close attention only to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. However, the following uh, emerge from the context of 20th century global politics and wars uh, like the League of Nations, international labor organizations, anti-slavery society, and then there are others that emerged from the horrors of World War II, including uh, the United Nations Charter and the Universal De Declaration of Human Rights. The prosecution of international crimes is illustrated then in the Nuremberg military trial. There's a, a little video of that uh, in, the, in the weekly folder, uh, the Tokyo Tribunal, the Nuremberg Charter, uh, and other items. And then finally, the International Criminal Court that came into existence in 2002. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights came into existence in 1948, and again, there is a nice little recording of that document by Eleanor Roosevelt. And finally, you'll see in the weekly folder uh, a link to the United Nations International Covenants and other international conventions. You should only take a brief look at these. These are outlined or thumbnailed in Chapter 2 uh, of uh, Clapham. So what protections are afforded by these? What are the limitations? Uh, the subsequent chapters in the Clapham Reader raise numerous questions by detailing issues and specific examples. The foreign policy in the United Nations, under what circumstances do nations complain about each other or request intervention? Under what circumstances do nations allow the United Nations to intervene? What about the crime of torture? which is really, again, an international, typically an international crime, but not always. Under what circumstances can the freedom of some be restricted to protect others? This frames a more general set of criminal justice questions that resonate in our contemporary world. And what about our rights to privacy? What about food, nutrition, education, health, and housing, and work as basic human rights? What are the rights of the child? And how can these rights be nourished, protected, and enforced? Other chapters deal with discrimination and inequality and the death penalty. At the end of the book, you will find a summary of references, a copy of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and suggestions for further reading, which make the Andrew Clapham reader a nice little handbook or guide for current and future reference 
as well as for other readings and videos in the Week 2 to 3 folder. I look forward to the discussion of the topics and to your contributions. Remember, the topic is endless and expanding. Focus on something of interest to you early in the semester, and this will allow you to participate more fruitfully in this vast array of topics that are uncovered under the rubric of human rights.